Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan. My name is Jakat Zaman. Welcome to this series. This is the 40 hadith of Mullah Ali Qari. Hope you guys are having a wonderful time. If you guys haven't checked out my other videos, please check them out. And let's continue. Right, so we have reached this hadith over here. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Mawalina minna. Our freedmen are from amongst us. Anas radiallahu anhu narrated from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa saying, the freedman of a people is one of them. So this is a well-known hadith. Mawalina um, minna. Narrated by Imam Tabrani. So let's have a look at this hadith then. So first of all, the concept of, in Islam, the concept of the status of the slave. When Islam came, Islam came and encouraged people to free slaves. So around the world, all around the world, people used to have slaves. And the slavery was considered to be something that was a norm. It was a way of, after battles, people basically, um, you know, cap capturing the people so that they, they weaken, their, their strength weakens. However, when Islam came, Islam put restrictions with regards to take, taking slaves. So there were restrictions on the slaves. You had to treat them well, their treatment. You had to feed them. You weren't allowed to, to uh, torture them or beat them and so forth. So all these things were discussed by the Prophet ﷺ. And also, it was highly encouraged to free slaves. Freeing a slave is like, you know, in so many different aspects of Islam, this encouraged to free a slave. Right, so freeing a slave became very, very important. And this became like a trend of freeing slaves. So when you free a slave, this fr slave now might, might have been in slavery for many years. And so now the slave has now become a, a mawla. The word in Arabic, mawla, you probably heard this word that's used for masters. But it's also used for slave. Funny enough, it's one of those strange words that has its opposite meaning as well. So the, the, the mawla was known as the free man. So the free man now, what's the status of this free man? Does this free man just wander around the streets and have no, no connection with anyone and no lineage, just lives in a vacuum? No. The free man was someone who actually was given the status of his last owners. So if there is a person and this person, let's say, for example, is a slave and he had X owners. So let's say, for example, that there was X owners. Now, whatever tribe the ex-owner was from so let's say for example the ex-owner was from the tribe of the Quraysh then now what's going to happen is this as a virtue of being freed by a Quraysh he also gains the title of being from Quraysh but he gains the title of being from Quraysh as a freeman yeah so he he will be known as the Mawla of Quraysh yeah, the freedman the Mawla of Quraysh and so the same sort of rules apply to this person. So let's say, for example, the Quraysh have come into a treaty with another tribe, with this particular tribe, the free man will also gain this status as well. And if it was an ex-slave of the lineage of the Prophet ﷺ, the Mawla would also gain that status. And what's one of the rulings regarding the Mawlas? Well, one of the rulings of the, the Prophet's lineage is that they cannot take zakat. People who are from the lineage of the Prophet ﷺ, the paternal lineage of the Prophet ﷺ, is not permitted to take zakat. And hence, the mawla of the person who is from the lineage of the Prophet ﷺ is also not allowed to take a zakat. Now, one of the interesting things that you'll see is many of the non-Arabs who actually came into Islam, who were initially came into Islam um, and were, were, were initially cap captives of war and were slaves, and then they were freed by their masters actually gain Arab lineage, right? And this is again, uh, you see this with famous Imams like Imam Bukhari and many others who actually um, gain the title of their, their ex-masters and have this name with them. And so this is actually considered to be an honorary title as well. So it's an honorary title for them that these are the people who ha re receive freedom. And there's also one uh, other rule with regards to this status as well, which is the inheritance as well. Right? So inheritance, so those of you guys who have studied the chapter of inheritance, 
would know that if there is an ex-slave and the ex-slave dies, so let's say for example this is an ex-slave and he dies, right, so RIP. Now what's going to happen basically is, is that the uh, the person, if he has a family, his family will obviously inherit, right? So his inheritance will be divided with his family, if he has one. And if he doesn't have a family, then the mola will actually inherit from him. Yeah, the mola will actually inherit from him. And, you know, this or this status is something which uh, can be for the other way around as well, with the connection that they have. Um, and that's it, basically. So this is um, this is one of the sort of uh, systems that were, that was put in place early in Islam to encourage people to free the slaves and not only just to free them but also to take care of them after their freedom right? so you can imagine so many people becoming free you know so many people being freed of slavery and then they have nowhere to live or they're having no real status in the society um, and then this happening I mean in, in today's times uh, we don't really have uh, the structure of uh, um, the social structure that they used to have in the Arabs days um, and so in, in today's times, if, uh, you know, let's say, for example, a person was freed from slavery, it wouldn't really be a problem for them to affiliate themselves with a particular group. But nowadays, maybe it would be something which is normally like maybe, you know, you get a passport of that particular country, right? You get the same same rights, same freedoms as uh, as that particular uh, family or whoever freed you. And there you go. So let's just look at this again. So slavery, uh, when Islam came, Islam encouraged the freeing of slaves uh, set down laws of treating slaves, rights for the slaves, international laws for tr free treatment of slaves. And then this free person would obviously, once he's freed, he's living in a society which is very, very uh, tribal, tribal orientated. Uh, and a lot of the slaves were from non-Arab lands. So what basically would happen would, is that the slave would actually uh, have no way to live. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi laid down that they have the same rights as their freed owners. Right, so they become the same right. So if it's from Quraysh, they become the Mawlas of the Quraysh. And if it's from the lineage of the Prophet Sallallahu the same. And for example, like they can't take Zakat if they're from the lineage of the Prophet Sallallahu just like the Prophet Sallallahu lineage cannot take Zakat. And they also gain the name of that particular tribe. So if it's Quraysh, it's Quraysh. If it's, um, you know, a, 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 a Khazraj or Aus, it's Khazraj Aus. And Imam Bukhari is one of those examples. And many other scholars, I've just mentioned one there. And also the rules of inheritance where they actually receive inheritance if there is no other heirs of theirs available. And so Jazakumullah khair guys. I hope you guys benefit from this. Thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, thank you to all my patrons for supporting my channel. It really means a lot to me. And if you guys want to support my channel, help my channel. And many of you guys in the month of Ramadan, mashallah, have shown your kind support towards the channel. May Allah bless all of you and put barakah in your time and your health and your wealth. Check out the description below. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.